Hey everyone, as I've mentioned previously, there's a very fine line between a soft landing and a hard landing. A hard landing, of course, would mean that the US economy goes into a recession. A soft landing, on the other hand, means economic growth moves very close to zero, but doesn't fall into negative territory. And this is not an exact science. Quite frankly, the difference between a hard landing and a soft landing could be really fuzzy. So this week's video is an update on a video I did in May. That video focused on the Somme rule as the key recession indicator to watch. As you may recall, the Somme rule compares the average unemployment rate over the last three months with the lowest monthly unemployment reading over the previous 12 months. If the difference is 50 basis points or more, the risk of a recession is high. Since I released that video, the unemployment rate has increased by 20 basis points to 4.1%, and that movement has lifted the Somme indicator to 43. Translating that, the average unemployment rate over the last three months is 43 basis points higher than the lowest monthly unemployment rate in the preceding 12 months. So a lot will be riding on the July unemployment rate that comes out on August 2nd, which just so happens to be two days after the next Fed meeting where they'll decide what to do with interest rates. I guess timing is everything. So if the unemployment rate goes down, the SOM indicator will go down and in theory, we avoid a recession for now. If the unemployment rate stays flat at 4.1%, the SOM indicator creeps up to 47, still below the official SOM rule recession threshold of 50. But if the unemployment rate goes up by 10 basis points to 4.2%, then the SOM indicator will hit 50 exactly. And in theory, that indicates we're likely heading into a recession. Now, I want to point out that the other highly reliable recession indicator, the three-month 10-year Treasury yield curve, has been inverted since October of 2022. And based on that indicator, we should theoretically already be in a recession. So if the July unemployment rate reading is 4.2% or higher, then the two most reliable recession indicators would be blinking, and the pressure on the Fed to cut rates will mount. Right now, the Federal Reserve is in the tricky part of the decision process, where they're balancing on a razor's edge. If they hold rates flat at the end of July and the unemployment rate goes up, then a hard landing becomes a real possibility. After July 31st, the next scheduled Fed meeting when they could drop rates isn't until September 18th, and that might be a bit too late to dodge the bullet. On the other hand, if the Fed cuts rates on July 31st and the unemployment rate goes down, then the Fed rate reductions might be premature and we could risk resurgent inflation. At the moment, Wall Street is still predicting the Fed will hold rates flat at their July meeting with a first rate cut in September. But it's possible the Fed could still shift gears in the coming weeks. We're already seeing a shift in Chairman Powell's talking points that suggest a cut is coming. Now, real estate investors have a lot on the line here. Lower interest rates will help close the pricing expectation gap, but if a recession were to hit, it could weigh on commercial real estate space demand. That, of course, could push vacancy rates higher and reduce future rent growth. But the severity of recessions matter. And remember, each property type and each metro in the U.S. would be impacted by a recession in a different way. A mild recession may have very little effect on commercial real estate performance, especially if it's a short recession. In addition, as we've seen in the past, recessions don't treat all metros equally. Texas rebounded quickly from both the financial crisis recession and the COVID recession, while several other metros were more severely affected by one or both of those events. And at this point, if we have a recession at all, it's very likely to be mild. Job creation is still running at a healthy pace. Retail sales have been holding up pretty well, even on an inflation adjusted basis. And total savings, including money market funds like CDs, currently stands $4 trillion above where it was before the pandemic on an inflation adjusted basis. Nonetheless, 
Inflation and most of the other economic metrics suggest the Fed will need to cut rates soon. For real estate investors, I think we finally see a light at the end of the inflation and elevated interest rate tunnel. It's gonna be a beacon to watch as we keep our eyes on the horizon.